Today's video is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Robin from the YouTube channel Lifting the Lid is a pretty big guy on the UK flat earth scene. He has a podcast, he organises the Bristol Flat Earth Meetup, he was interviewed for a TV show, and he helped organise the Globe Lie Tour. So, do I pass up the opportunity to make one of the UK's most influential flat earthers look like he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, what do you think? Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Right, Robin, you may remember, appeared on this channel before, quite some time ago. You need to learn the meaning of the word exponentially. Oh, and let's have a quick look at the interest over the past year. I even asked to go on his Hall of Shame. That hasn't happened yet though. Oh well. Anyway, on a recent video, Robin was showing everyone some activism he'd been doing in his local area. And in particular, wanted to show off his flat smacking skills. I warn you all though, this one is going to be totally annihilated. Let's join Robin as he introduces his little video. So I'm, going to, I'm not going to involve you in the whole activism, but this guy here run around the park three times. And the third time round, he stopped and really started to pay attention. Now, look at his <laughs> look at his T-shirt. Not sure of Robin's point here. He likes Star Wars. So what? It's a stormtrooper. Always lies flat. Yeah. So at some point, the Earth's got to bend and bend that water. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> oh, well, if, have you ever seen a globe? And most of it is the Pacific Ocean on yeah. one side, isn't it? Yeah. So... If we were to <laughs> now pay attention, right? I'm going to go back 10 seconds. Pay attention to this guy running down that water. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> oh, well, if, have you ever seen a globe? And most of it is yeah. the Pacific Ocean on yeah. one side, isn't it? Yeah. So if <laughs> I've got to do it again and bend I've that got water, to do it wouldn't again. you agree? No, you really don't. Besides, he was probably looking in disbelief. Right, see him there. This guy makes satellites. <laughs> this is priceless now. So he's paying attention. His wife has already been down to see me and has sent off for her husband. Must have done it on the phone. Well, it wasn't carrier pigeon, was it? <laughs> and he makes satellites. And wait for this. If we were to take on board this idea that we live on a globe, we have to also take on the idea. Right, so my video's paused for some reason, but that doesn't stop me. That doesn't stop me uh, zooming forwards a bit. See if I can find the right bits. No, oh, that's charming, isn't it? The video it would eventually drop. Right. Well, that's his wife. That's the sa that's the satellite maker's wife. Right. So he's now reading a flyer. So basically the same gobbledygook that's on the floor in front of him. His wife, the satellite maker's wife, is here. And um, she runs off and gets her husband. Now, he's really paying attention now. And he says, my, my mate lo loves this. Make a critical thinking person stop and go, yeah, that's contradictory to what I've been told. So I've asked you about your number one proof. Where would you go to next for your number two proof? It is a bit of a trick question yeah. because most people haven't got a number two yeah, proof. Yeah. The first proof should be all you need. The literally hundreds of thousands of photos of Earth. And I'm trying to highlight the fact that we, uh, we are susceptible to brainwashing and we've been given globes on BBC, Universal Pictures, Star Wars. All these things have given us this globe 
and yet we should have some pretty concrete evidence from NASA by now. Video footage, particularly. Round, 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 the Earth is round. Smart people found that the Earth is round. There's proof abound, don't fool around. The data sound, the Earth is round. Like an apple or a melon being sailed by brave Magellan. Yet you ask, is this all true? What the hell, what's wrong with you? Like a snowball or a beat, it spins through space, it's really sweet. Your lack of science is quite right. Goodness gracious, get a life. Round, 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 the earth is round. Is that enough for you, Robin? But let me guess, all fake. Then why ask for video footage? Why haven't we got video footage of the Earth spinning? And we haven't. Let me get this straight. You want video footage of the Earth spinning twice as slow as the hour hand on a clock. You don't really understand things, do you, Robin? Yeah. Well, they so, love this because I'm eating for lunch. Are he's, you? He's, he's well into all this stuff. The, the trouble is, once you've seen this stuff, you can't unsee it. <laughs> so it's a bit of a curse in some ways because none of us set out to be into this. But once it gets into you, you think, hold on a minute, that's one grievous lie. And who is brainwashed now? Next, the guy who makes satellites joins the conversation. Listen to this. My answer to that is, oh, hiya. Hello. Did you pick up a flyer from oh, no, your other half? My wife did. Oh, brilliant. So my, the, I'm, I'm, ask, I'm, I'm not convinced. Don't worry. I'm no, not, you'll never convince <laughs> us. Don't worry. No, mo, I'm just answering this gentleman's or uh, suggesting the, the reason why for this is the short answer is money, power and land. Mm -hmm. The long answer is there's a guy called uh, Sir Admiral Byrd and he was the US's most decorated um, explorer. And he spent 30 years and up to the late 50s exploring Antarctica. Then he came on a black and white documentary called The Long Jeans Chronoscope. And he said, I found land the size of America beyond the South Pole. This is a classic example of a flat earther saying something and not really researching it. Admiral Byrd did indeed travel to the South Pole. Antarctica has an area of 14 million square kilometers and the US only 9.8 million. So it's no surprise that you found a lot of land. Secondly, Admiral Byrd's discovery at the South Pole led him down a hollow earth rabbit hole. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, that still means he thought the earth was a globe. And it's going to be the envy of the world. There'll be all nations scrambling over the coal, the oil and the uranium I've found. So anyway, shortly afterwards, the Antarctic Treaty was formed, where 52 nations signed up to essentially locking down Antarctica in order to go there as a free person like me. I'd need to fill out a business case that needs to be signed off by 52 nations and I need $2 million. This is simply a lie. This here is the homepage for the Antarctic Marathon. You can run this with only a passport for access to Chile and $18,000. One example. So, but if you go and look at the Antarctic Treaty today, it's still... But they have in 1958, I'm saying, the Antarctic Treaty is there for everyone to see. And what's interesting is two years later, you can look this up, Operation um, Fishbowl was the Russians and the Americans fired atomic warheads into the atmosphere. And you can see them crashing against something. They're tr they are definitely trying to figure out what is up there. No, it was an operation conducted in 1962 by the US only and not Russia, but essentially it was a series of high altitude nuclear tests. That is all. Shortly after... No, no, there was a series of airburst nuclear tests that were quickly abandoned. Yeah. Uh, but, but shortly but after... Exploded against something, that's seeing what happened with a high altitude... Absolutely. Test. And you... It's and a you, different thing entirely. Uh, yeah, but you can actually see the timing and the sequence of these events is very telling because, um, first of all, the most heavily protected, funded and decorated explorer of all time in America found something and came on a TV show and said, I found land. So, yes, the rest of Antarctica. The following year, they, they set up the Antarctic Treaty because it's clear they wanted to lock it down. So now no so nation one, can go so back. So one alleged TV appearance outweighs things like being able to see the horizon. Okay, so, so if I might just politely challenge you, this is one of more than 
300 proofs we've got. I'm just giving you a little synopsis. So seeing the horizon, sir, a Coolpix P900 camera can bring boats back from where you thought they went out of your line of perspective. My gorgeous dog is lying on my diagram there. But when you did our... Have you actually tried that? It, it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't actually have that. Yeah, it does. You can get to the point where it seems a bit hazy because of distance and you can bring it back into focus. When you go over the horizon... Oh, sir. This guy is absolutely spot on. You can bring boats back into view with a Nikon P900. There is no disputing that. But once you try and bring them back into view when they've already gone over the curve, you end up getting this. All this. All this. Robin can't seem to accept this though. Watch. Um, when you put it on a mask, you can see further. Oh, sir, I'm, I'm politely you challenging you. Buttons. I'm politely telling you, if you put an infrared if you put an infrared filter on your lens, you, you remove all refraction and distortion. Proof that Robin has absolutely no idea what he's talking about. An infrared lens does not remove refraction. Now, infrared light does refract less than visible light, but it still does refract. An atmospheric lensing, and you can see 100 miles away, and that's all, that's proof. Well, I said you can see 100 miles away, but you can't see things on the ground 100 miles away. Yes, you can, away. though, sir. The evidence is there <laughs> to see. If you're, willing yeah, to, if you're willing to look, sir, it's all over the internet. Yeah. What Robin is failing to point out here is that you can see 100 miles if you yourself are elevated and the object you're looking at is elevated. It's really not that hard. If he is watching, then I challenge him to take a photo of a beach from another beach 100 miles away. He won't be able to. Um, well, the internet's wonderful, but I actually build satellites for a living. Do you? Okay. <laughs> okay, but what about the Brazilian one that fell down having been on a high altitude balloon? Yeah, last year. It got, it... What, what, what about the geostationary satellites that allow you to make phone calls? What about GPS? Like, yes, excuse me, sir, but 99% of the internet comes through undersea cables, and I used to work for GCHQ. Whilst Robin isn't wrong here, the man said GPS. And I know the USGS system is a series of tiles which are all stitched together, not from satellites. They're from high altitude balloon footage. <laughs> and that's how all GPS works on the USGS system. So the US GPS system uses high altitude balloons, yet I can access GPS here in the UK. G, global. You might laugh, sir, but I am very qualified to know this answer. Qualified to know the answer, but mocks hundreds of thousands of scientists who are qualified to say the Earth is a globe. And by the way, doesn't believe a man that makes satellites for a living. The irony. Because I've worked... Oh, excuse me, sir. I challenge you to go on the internet and find one real photo of a satellite in space. Just one. Because no one can find one. And that's really telling. This is the NanoRax Remove Debris Satellite deployed by the ISS in June 2018. If that doesn't satisfy you, how about this? This is a picture of the ISS, as it technically is a satellite, and it's taken by Geron, a flat earther no less. Go look. I'm, I know you're in this business, sir, so it's a challenge. And I know I'm not trying we'll to... Back here next Sunday. I'm not... <laughs> I challenge you because that's why there are millions of people now who are, who have looked for this evidence, but it's not there. What, 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 do, you, what do you mean a real photo? I, I can look up in the sky at night and watch things like the, the, the uh, space station. Go up and let me go let me challenge you. How big is the space station? Uh, it's probably about fifty meters then. The satellite maker said fifty meters. It's actually fifty-one meters, so pretty good guess. Okay. So how big is a jumbo jet? Hmm? How big is a jumbo jet? Oh, smaller than that. So. When a jumbo jet is flying at 30,000 feet, can we, can we see it? Just. The difference is, you know those giant solar panels that they have? Yeah. They reflect light. Okay. That so As what's dark to us, can, it's in daylight, we're not. We, we okay, can, again, I'm, polite, I'm politely challenging the way our eyes work. So The man was absolutely correct. Robin's silly example was proving nothing. The ISS reflects a lot of light. Not enough to be seen during the day, but plenty to be seen during the night. And what does Robin think that this actually is then?
At 30,000 feet, we can barely see a plane. We're talking, how, how high is the space station up? It's, um, as far as you've actually got, I think it's in the old one, about 150 to 200 miles. I think it's 200-ish miles. So if I, a plane's altitude is about seven miles up, all right? Mm -hmm. So you're telling me that I can see something that's 50 miles, 50 meters across, 47 times higher than a, than a plane. Yeah. I'm sorry. That, our eyes do not work that okay, way. So Says the man qualified in undersea cables and GPS. Got solar panels on it as a part of the size of a football field. And they're just, just like a dead mirror. I, like you stand on a mountain with a mirror, it's a safer mirror. Yeah, but you sir, sir uh, there is the diminishing law of perspective where things exponentially get smaller due to the doubling of the distances. They do what? Robin clearly doesn't understand the meaning of the word exponentially. And I'm telling you, it'd be impossible to see anything 50 meters across, 220 miles away. Yet we still do. You've but just told me it's 50 though. You've just told me it's 50 yeah, meters. You see it as a point source, just like you see the sun as a point source. Even though it's it, again, it's I, I politely challenge you, sir, because when people claim they've seen the ISS, they, they get a real definition on it. You can see these fins on it. Yeah, you, things, right? Yes, they are. Yes, they do. I've seen. I've seen people show images and... Like this one, you mean? From Geronism, using a P900. No one has ever said that they've seen the fins with the naked eye. Straw man. I just respectfully challenge you, sir, because something at 200 miles away would not be visible. Because well, I can I like barely... That one as well. Gravity is easily explained by buoyancy and density. Okay, can I just go through the contradictions of gravity, sir? Oh, no, here we go. We're, we're supposed to believe that on the underside of a ball, gravity holds trillions of tons of water upside down. And yet with my own breath, I can suck with vacuum, suck with a straw, the ocean into my mouth. How does that work? Quite easily. Because you know the formula for gravity, yeah? I don't want maths. I just want gra a common gra sense. Gra gravity is quite a, quite a weak force. It's so strong that it holds trillions of tons of water to a ball. Have you heard what you're saying there, sir? It's ridiculous. No, no, it holds each atom of that water. But the reality it's is... Each atom being tiny. The reality is, we, if for, in order for us to accept that gravity holds trillions of tons of water to a ball, we need to suspend all our common sense. No, you do. The satellite guy was right. Gravity is a weak force. Your straw sucking produces a force that is stronger than gravity, which is why you can suck up all that seawater. When the ocean is just sitting there, there are a few forces acting on it, but none strong enough to lift it completely off the Earth's surface. Because the other, the other thing is, sir, um, the vacuum of space is supposed to coexist alongside so the, so the pressurised... Tell, tell me what does hold these things down. Well, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't, earth, you, you would say the water is down. And... I, I don't believe, I don't believe in a globe, sir, because all the evidence points to the contrary. <laughs> yes, evidence that you have been brainwashed with by useless YouTubers. <laughs> and really let, let me just... Can I ask you one question? Yes. What got you into this? Because I looked into the evidence, I saw that the world record photography record is 275 miles. And according to you, the maths of a ball, sir, uh, we're, miss we're missing the, math, the geometry of a ball, eight inches per mile squared. That's, you cannot argue with that maths. Also, we are seeing things too far, 275 miles away. We're missing three miles of curvature. This isn't a flat earther's photograph. This is just the long distance world record photograph. I shouldn't be able to see that mountain range. Now, despite complaining about looking at an object that is 200 miles away, he's quite happy to quote the world photography distance record of 275 miles. He also explained that you can't argue with the maths, and I would agree with him. Here is the photo in question. So this world record attempt is taken from Peak de Finistrelles at an elevation of 2,820 meters. Peak Gaspard is the peak that provides us with the world record, and that is 443 kilometers away and stands 3,867 meters tall. Plugging all of that into the curve calculator and taking a fraction into account, we can see that the hidden value is 3,816 meters. That leaves 51 meters left we should be able to see. Given that in the photo you can barely see Peak Gaspard, 
then that makes perfect sense and is exactly what we'd expect to see. The photo proves nothing and is good evidence to show that people like Robin swallow all sorts of evidence or evidence that they are shown. You said it yourself, buddy. You can't argue with the maths. And yet it should be behind three miles of curvature. That's, that's incontrovertible evidence, number one. And number two is water always seeks and finds its level, always. So we, I have to suspend my disbelief. And, yeah. and the thing that makes you do that is because of gravity. <laughs> oh, can I, can I challenge you once again, sir, on gravity? <laughs> oh no, here he goes again. So um, imagine we're at the, uh, we, we've got the Earth's atmosphere, which is a pressurized system, yeah? And we've got the vacuum of space, which is a minus 10 torr force, okay? Of course, Robin knows that you can't have a negative torr value, doesn't he? Oh. He doesn't know that, so he doesn't have a clue what he's talking about. Right, okay. And we're supposed to believe that... Mm, I've got a bit of a lock up on my uh, stream, so until that comes back, I just want to make a comment that... Two opposing oh, pressure systems can coexist without equilibrating. That makes no sense. Makes no sense to you, Robin. You're once again just parroting all the rubbish you've heard from other YouTubers without actually understanding anything. But they don't, though. We would, need a solid, we would need a solid barrier, wouldn't we? No, it's just a bit of a bit. <laughs> but the thing is, your, your force of gravity, sir, um, in the construction industry, we use suction pads to lift two-ton slabs of concrete. That proves that the vacuum's beating gravity right here on, on ground level. So how on earth is the vacuum of space not ripping, a, ripping off the atmosphere? Well, actually, Robin, you've just debunked yourself here without actually understanding, again, how anything works. The suction pads you're referring to work because the outside air pressure is pushing against those suction pads with the vacuum inside, allowing it to stay against the thing that it is picking up. With no air pressure inside those suction pads, it is held against the surface of something by air pressure. So it is the air pressure that's beating gravity, not the vacuum. I think I've got him on the ro ropes here. Sea level is caused by the weight of the atmosphere, which is caused by gravity. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm I'm much more inclined now because I've got a bit of critical thinking. I'm being honest with myself. I'm less likely to believe that trillions of tons of water can go on the underside of a ball and planes when they go round a 360 or a 180 angle. It's let's face it. If I'm a pilot in a plane, I'm setting off from the UK, and then I come down to Australia, that, plane, that plane's orientation is now upside down. How on earth does that work? Oh, Robin, you northern hemisphere chauvinist, you. It's, it's, it's going to be pretty rough, isn't it? I'm, I'm going to get out of here before I lose my mind. <laughs> no, it's fine. Lots of... <laughs> Thank you very much, madam. I'm making more sense than a lot of scientists, and I know I am. The delusion is frightening here, isn't it? Right, let's leave Robin there with his delusions and the incredibly incorrect assertion that he won that little debate. I've got just enough time left to thank today's sponsors, ExpressVPN. I use ExpressVPN because I'm constantly in different coffee shops trying to get enough dodgy Wi-Fi to watch the latest video from Conspiracy Cats or buy something off Amazon that I don't really need. Knowing I have the protection of ExpressVPN while I do this is absolutely vital and it means all my online data is protected when I'm out and about. With server locations in 94 countries and an app for every device, you can use the internet without restrictions and safely for less than $7 a month and with a 30 day money back guarantee. Take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box, expressvpn.com forward slash Simon Dan. Take back your privacy today with ExpressVPN. Thank you very, very much for joining me today. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, a like and subscribe will be thoroughly appreciated. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend and I'll see you briefly on Tuesday before the first guest creator does Tim Fall Tuesday. See you then.